So this video was filmed before the fire. Basically, this, in a, in a nutshell, was me running my Mark II plastic to gasoline or plastic crude oil to plastic gasoline, plastic diesel distiller here. So in terms of the build, the inside of this has perforated plates. It's about eight, nine foot tall. We have a live bit condenser here on this side. Also have this viewing window, really nice stuff. Tony Stark stuff. We also have some exit ports are around the top, you know, for possible fractionation and uh, tapping out different different fractions at different levels. You know, they're they're closed, but they're there if I ever wanted to use them. And you see, I got a total of three of them. And the feed port comes in from the side. This is actually based on the industrial big petroleum uh, type of distillers where the feed comes in from the side. Also, this is the main feed ports. Allows me to push in an inert gas to completely purge all the oxygen. And down here we have the crucible. This is where the oil will go. And th there's a burner down here as well. So we put the we'll feed the oil in from the top and it'll go down into this crucible. And then we'll heat up the oil. See, I have it very well insulated. And that oil will then become a vapor, which will go up to this pipe, which will go into the distiller. So here I am pouring in this plastic crude oil that we've been collecting over the months of running the reactor. As you see, the stuff is pretty much just like crude oil, same viscosity, same look. It's kind of crazy, right, to think like this came from plastic and it's like exactly like crude oil. It's beautiful in a way, right? So without further ado, now that we got this crude oil, we go ahead and we start feeding it into the crucible. Pretty simple, quick process, you know, just had to be careful not to spill it everywhere. But other than that, uh, we just went ahead, we fed it in. And we're going to get this distiller running now. Eighteen minutes in, this pipe is too hot to touch. Like, put my hand there, got to take it away. And this area of the column is starting to develop some heat on it so the heating is definitely efficient um, it's heating a lot quicker with all the insulation around it and the column is now starting there's definitely some oil vapors in this column transferring the heat to it two hours in I think I'm gonna need to add a burner down here because you know, look at all this oil that just collects at the bottom and it's just sitting there and it's, it's not even really hot so I have to add a burner down here yeah like look at all of this this is like all of the oil most intuitive way to fix the problem I had was to just move the boiler or where we actually put the oil move that right under the rea the um distiller so that way like when the oils condense out of this they just will fall back down into it and reflux um unfortunately i couldn't do that because as i said before i designed this off of the designs they use uh in the big industry industrial designs where it's fed in from the side so the boiler cannot fit under here it cannot and even if it could it wouldn't be insulated so the only two options I had was to put a burner under here or I did this right here which is I just make the feed of the boiler feed in under here now this is not the most ideal solution because it will be quite a bit of heat loss uh, between here and there but what this will do is actually as the vapor or the oils condense and fall back down the oils in here are going to actually bubble through those oils that condense on the base layer which will add heat to them and hopefully be able to add enough heat energy to them to get them to vaporize again and rise back up um, the only issue is you know the heat energy of this is completely limited by how much oil we put in here so like once this runs out of heat energy then there will just be a, a permanent layer of oils at the bottom which can't really go anywhere you know what I'm saying um, and another potential issue is it could 
These, some of these pipes could get clogged with oil, which could cause some issues. But, but most likely, more than likely, the oil vapor pressure would push the oils through, you know, and bubble through them. But, you know, we, we, the only way to know is just to see. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this the way it is. So as you see, I ended up moving the column above the furnace box. And that's because <laughs> at the end of the day, this is the best way to do it with the reflux. Anyways. It's been running for about an hour and I have something cool to show you. Look, in this window, we can see some oil that has um, condensed out on the window itself. So we, you know, it's just cool that we could actually see something through it. And I'm sorry the camera's a little bit shaky. I literally have to be standing on a block because this thing is probably around 12 foot tall, if I'm being honest with you. I anyway, the point is... The heat is now all the way up here, and it's nearing the top. And once it hits the top, then we'll be able to start collecting some carbon.